Hey fellow chairmen of Destined, it's Mike aka Sanaku from Overground and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be trying out a bit of a new layout uh, idea uh, to see if this actually comes through properly and if it does this is probably something that we're going to be using for the foreseeable future so that way you can get to see my ugly mug, you get to see all the cards on the table and you know this is something we could probably do for uh, streaming options as well if we actually have the opportunity to finally get into that game. So look forward to us on Twitch eventually we do have a twitch account we've done one live stream unboxing on there so far but if this setup and layout proves to be successful this is something that you potentially could see us having a more active um presence on twitch so hopefully it works and hopefully if you're watching this video on youtube right now it did and if so great thumbs up all around but today if you are watching this today i'm here to talk to you about the shine graymon yellow list that i took to a top four finish at the h gaming digi championship event that took place today saturday may 22nd and what this event was was pretty much a mix of uh, a bunch of different content creators for digimon kind of all around the globe that uh played in a bunch of different qualifiers over the last couple of months and we all kind of came together at the top uh contestants from each one of those individual qualifiers and then we kind of had one giant battle royale to duke it out to see which country came on top which was the uh the supreme global content creator the supreme country to kind of rule over them all and uh, of course i was representing canada and uh, i participated in the canadian qualifier a few months back and i actually finished first place in my canadian qualifier with blue imperial and that was a deck that i almost wanted to take today but it was one of those decks that i just did not feel 100 percent safe and comfortable with playing uh it's a deck that really loses to itself and it's kind of in for a penny, in for a pound, and when you're playing it, you're generally just flying by the seat of your pants a lot. So I decided to play Yellow Shine Raymond because Shine Raymond is a deck, not only is it one of my favorite decks uh, of the format, uh, one of my first decks that I ever played in the Digimon TCG when we first started making proxies and stuff like that, but it's also uh, a deck that I felt that I'm always in the most control of when I'm playing any single game of Digimon uh, currently right now in the format. It's a, it's a deck that I feel that I'm always generally sure of what I can do every turn, and I'm generally sure of what my opponent is capable of doing to me every turn, and it requires a lot of thought, yes, but it's also very rewarding in the sense that the amount of thought that you put into every single play has a tremendous amount of payoff if you've thought about it properly and if you've sequenced your cards properly, and I really like a deck that not only challenges me as a player intellectually, but also challenges me to continue to increase my level of technical play, and that's what Shine Greymon kind of does as a whole. So not only do I continue to play this deck as often as I can to kind of continue to help me grow but it's also a deck that I just love playing overall, so it's a deck that I really have no qualms of, of taking into an event with. And yeah, so this is the build that we took today, and uh, it's very similar to the deck that you saw us build in the first draft for the um, Rainbow series that we put on earlier in the channel as well. But let's go through the card by card and just kind of talk about some general discussion about the deck, and then I'm going to go over my matchups as well for the day. So uh, let's talk about how the tournament was run real quick, actually, before we jump into all of this. So how it worked was that... Uh, there was a bunch of, I'm not sure the number of now, but there was a bunch of different pods of four players each. And when these players were kind of chosen at random to be put into these pods, and what ended up happening was that uh, you played three rounds round robin uh, in individual pod, and the top two players from each individual pod moved on to the top 16, and then from there, it just became a single elimination tournament from 16 to 2 in the finals, and then the winner obviously coming out ahead there. So obviously, as I finished top 4, I made 2 the top 4, and then I lost the top 4 match, just missing out of the finals, unfortunately. But uh, I did manage to take the deck through an, uh, at least three rounds of the top 16 bracket, which I'm very proud of, and I'm very happy with how I finished and how I represented Canada. So let's talk about the deck. So we've got four copies of Upamon, arguably the best baby in yellow, right now at least, until we get Koromon and BT4. We've got one copy of Tokamon. So now a lot of people play, uh, I believe it's... Kiaramon? I can't remember the name of it right now. The one, or Kyukimon, sorry. And Kyukimon is the one where if you have five security on attack declaration, you need to draw one. And I find that just never really comes up for Shine, so it wasn't really something that I was super excited for. Tokemon, on the other hand, comes into random niche situations because if you reduce DP to zero and delete something, you can get plus a thousand. Uh, it doesn't come up very often, but I just needed a fifth baby for when you get into grind games and stuff like that. So I just felt it was a proc that I could generally get a lot more often than I could with Kyukimon, and I was just going to get a bit more value out of it. So moving on to the rookies. This is a bit of a different rookie lineup than you see from standard shine decks and that's because i decided to just max out on the most impactful cards that yellow can play right now and so i'm playing for the patamon this is the patamon with the inheritable where um when you reduce something to zero uh reduce dp to zero you just get to gain one memory normally most copies 
of Shine Grey Mod play like maybe one to two, maybe even three copies of Lotmon, and then generally you're looking at maybe two to three copies of Salamon. I decided to max out on Lotmon specifically and not play something else like the, the two cost two Kaimon or the other Salamon that reduces DP by a thousand, or even the uh, the Savers Agumon that if you have three timers you get to draw one out of Dark Decoration. And the reason I wanted to max out on Lotmon specifically is because I wanted to make sure that I gave myself the most consistency possible with this deck, and Lotmon always gives me that guaranteed plus one draw on play as long as I look the as long as I take the top part of my security that I've looked at and then I get to add it to my hand. And Lotmon helps us play around our opponent playing around us, because generally when they play against a Shine Greymon deck, the opponent will do everything in their power to not get you to three security, so you don't trigger a lot of your extra bonus effects. And with Lotmon specifically, it helped us kind of get us into that three range faster without our opponent having to attack us, and that way if our opponent is kind of holding off on purpose, we can get there. We can unlock our Karis, for example, we can unlock our recovery options, and that just kind of gets us into the game and get our juices flowing a little bit more. But I also didn't want to play any kind of redundant rookies, because I felt that if I played maybe one or two copies of like an ancillary rookie that I just could potentially have like cool poten like uh, cool effects down the road, it just never came up and I never drew it at the right time. If I did draw it and it worked out, great, but I just wanted to max out and have the maximum consistency possible with the rookies that I did play. So this is what we see. So on the champion lineup, it's pretty much standard for a Shining Raymond deck. We've got four copies of Churimon. This is our one cost Evo. We've got four copies of Unimon, just because we need blockers in the deck to survive. And the biggest change in this version of the deck that I've had compared to other versions is that I'm not playing Repamon, which normally I would to kind of compensate for the small rookie lineup, because Repamon is a three-cost champion, and that is the same general on-play cost as what most of these rookies even are. But instead, I opted to play Geogramon, and for one cost more to hard play, Geogramon gives me a stronger rookie rush matchup, because if you're unfamiliar with Geogramon, when you have three more Tamers in play, um, on attack, you get to reduce one of your opponent's DP by 2,000, and this helps me snipe Vmons, the jamming Vmons specifically, without necessarily having to attack over them. So I can actually go into my opponent's security, not have to waste an attack on the Vmon that would have likely survived due to its own jamming effect, and then I can use the Geogramon to just get rid of it, get it off the board, and that way I can get a cool little kind of you know, two for one deal going on. Uh, this is also in here to just help deal with random niche situations if I'm going up against, uh, you know, a Megazoo deck, for example, or something that I just didn't have enough tamers to kind of get me over the top. Geogray kind of helps me with my math a little bit more sometimes and helps me just kind of knock out bigger Digimon that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to if I just didn't have the right tamer count as well. And for a four cost, it's not as bad as slamming it down with Repamon, for example, and it gives something with Repamon that I didn't always dislike, is that once you evolve over the Repamon, it's just, it's done, it's gone. This at least gives me a fun little inheritable to have in my back pocket later on down throughout the course of the game. Now, I will say, spoiler alert, I did lose in the top four, as we've discussed already, but I lost to Rookie Rush, and it was the trolliest thing ever because I drew all three copies of the Geogramon, and I didn't draw any other Tamers for the remainder of the game, and I just had the one lone Kari that I could just could not draw into anything else, and so while I did tack this specifically for that matchup, and I did get to see all of them, they literally did not get to put in nearly as much work as I wanted them to. So moving on to the ultimates, we're playing four copies of Rise Greymon, again, just pretty standard for uh, Yellow and Shine specifically. Uh, did you all get to play Yellow Tamer from your hand for free? And it's got the neat little heritable where if you have three more Tamers, get security attack plus one. We've got three copies of Cybermon, again, this is just too similar to Turimon, just a cheap evolution, help us get into our plays a little bit faster, and it's also really cheap to hard play, and generally if you can get two Karis out with a TK, you'll just go straight to five, that means you don't actually have to go up the ladder to go into a shine, you can just slam down Siren, put a shine over top, and you're laughing. Next we've got two copies of Anja Woman. Anja Woman works similar to the Salamon, so if we have three or less security, we can trigger one of these to recover one. Anja Woman just needs to be digivolved over something to get the trigger, and Salamon of course needs to be deleted. So now we're going to move on to the main boy himself, Forsha and Greymon. Unfortunately I only own three alt arts, and it hurts my soul so much, but we played the three that we have, and we're just going to complement that with the fourth lonely regular art. But there's not much to say about Shine. He's a bomb when he hits the board. 4,000 DP reduction for every single tamer that you have in play. You pretty much wipe everything that you need off the face of the earth. And then otherwise, he also gets plus 1,000 for every tamer that you have in play. Not yellow tamer, I just found out, which was actually a fun little uh, neat addition that will never come up because I'm probably not going to play any non-yellow tamers in this deck, but just food for thought, something to think about. Then we're moving on to the last megas we have, and it's just two slash Anjumon, just the best complement for Shine, in my opinion. Uh, there are a lot of different Digimon that people experiment with. Some people experiment with Kentaurusmon, some people experiment with uh, Mastamon as well. I did experiment with Kentaurusmon earlier on in the Rainbow series as well, saying that I felt that slash just didn't have a lot of value. However, I quickly have done a 180 on that entire statement, and I find that reducing the 8,000 immediately while still having the potential to not end my turn, whereas opposed to something with Kentaurusmon, where the 11,000 either had to happen passively on my opponent's turn, or I had to wait another turn to get that effect off, 
slash for as weak as it is can still potentially help me get out of binds. It clears, you know, Dino Bees. It clears Pyodramons. It clears pretty much any rookie in the game. It clears blockers. It's just so many things that Slash can do that I kind of wrote off originally when I built the first draft of this deck. And going back to it, I uh, I honestly really missed him. And uh, I don't think I'd change it again. Maybe swap one if I wanted to go, you know, a little bit on a wacky route and play something like Mastamon as well, just to try something different. But for now, I think two slash is still the way to go. And then we're on to our timer lineup, and we're playing four copies of TK, four copies of Kari, and two copies of the security TK. And I feel like this ratio is perfect. I have never had an issue with this other than that one single match against Rookie Rush today. But other than that, I digress. But yeah, um, a lot of some people will play like three copies of Kari and then uh, three copies of this TK. I found that this TK is just very lackluster in a format with jamming, uh, especially when you have the jamming beam running around left, right, and center, and then you complement that with like every variant known to man. So this just doesn't come up nearly as often as I would have liked it to, and I'd rather have an extra copy of Kari, because the more copies of Kari that I can see, and the more copies of Kari that my opponent can hit in my security, this also uh, creates more opportunities for Kari to be in my security earlier before I hit that three threshold. It guarantees me to just get a ton of memory, reap a ton of advantage, and constantly play out my stuff to just keep control of the board. And then finally, the last three cards we're playing, we're not playing even Javelin in this list, we're just playing three Glorious Burst. And that's because looking over the deck lists of all of the uh, participants that had won their previous qualifiers, there was a ton of green and a ton of red. And I was expecting a lot of players to kind of play what they were familiar with and enter the event with those same decks that they had gotten very far with. So I figured this was my best bet to hedge against those decks specifically, because one Glorious Burst just completely outs a Saris Mon, for example, completely outs a Phoenix Mon, completely outs a War Greymon, even. Even a Blitz Greymon. Like, there are so many big, powerful monsters that those decks specifically want to end on, and Glorious Burst is just kind of a catch-all card to just kind of wipe the slate clean with all of those big Mega Digimon. So yeah, this is the deck, in a nutshell. So again, yeah, I was able to take this to a top four finish at the H Gaming Digi Championship event. So let's talk about my matchups. Well, round one, I played against Ice Barrier and his uh, Vikemon Turbo deck. And uh, I'll admit, I was not expecting this. Uh, I actually thought he was playing Blue Omni at first. He's, he kind of plays like this source control Blue Omni deck that he's been on for pretty much the majority of the format. But no, game one, I lost because I didn't expect the actual Vikemon itself. It came down with a Werderurumon as a source. And because I had a Digimon that had no sources, he was able to get three checks in because it was security attack plus two and that just completely annihilated me game two we were able to kind of take the game just by slow grindy control with shine Greymon. and game three we lost because uh, i had two digimon on board with two sources each and he had the uh, vikemon out with the where Gururumon, but it wasn't live because all we had we had full sources across the board and he ripped desperado blaster off the top which costs three and removes two sources from all of my digimon so the two digimon i had with two sources each now went to zero vikemon went online and he just proceeded to wipe us out there so really bad start to our day we and we lost the first round and you needed to basically go 2-1 to guarantee your spot in the top 16. Now as of round two uh, one of the participants actually dropped so I actually got a buy thankfully so that was my first win to move on to the next uh, round to potentially win that to potentially move on to the next uh, section of the tournament and in round three I played against a red deck and again Glorious Burst put in all of the work taking out every single one of his megas or any single stack that he was trying to build up into a mega and then Shining Greymon we just ripped through security of security attack plus one all the tamers on the board making it over 15,000 no threat of dying to Omni and security and just constantly putting on a lot of pressure by getting rid of his entire board little by little. So that we won that in three. I don't really remember the exact details of each individual game, but ultimately we got there. So while we were waiting for the, uh, the top 16 pairings to be posted, I was just sweating like a madman because technically now with the one individual that had dropped, all three of us who remain in our pod were all X1. We all had two wins and one loss because we all pretty much lost to each other. So it was basically anybody's game. And luckily, uh, I was able to eke it out just with a little bit higher opponent win percentage, so I ended up getting second place of my pod going into the top 16 match. So, in the top 16, we played Aspira TCG. George, good friend of ours, link to his channel in the description as well. Uh, we might actually be posting some uh, gameplay footage from that game between George and I, which I would love to share with you guys. And that way you can, you know, Check it out, check him out, spread the love, spread the, the, the Digimon content creator-ness. But what sucked about this is that, first of all, A, we had to play a friend, and B, we had to play another Canadian. So no matter what happened, like, it just, it was a lose-lose no matter what. Like, sure, if one of us win, and we were happy for the other, we could continue on to the event, but we still had to knock out a good friend of ours, and we still had to knock out another Canadian to limit our ability to have Canada actually win the whole thing, which really, really sucked. And George was playing a red deck, Red Omni, and, uh, you know, similarly to how we ended up happening with the Red Omni match in Swiss, we just ended up uh, 2 0 him because he did not see a Mega for a long time, and then it got to a point where he didn't see a Rookie for a long time, and we were just able to kind of control the board from there. 
Next, in the top eight match, I got to play against Purple, and that was honestly the quickest game I had ever played all day. Uh, I don't really remember much of it because it was just that quick. Uh, my opponent would build up to a uh, Lilithmon, I had Glorious Burst. My opponent tried to build up to a Beelzemon, I had Glorious Burst. Uh, my opponent tried to build up to a Mastamon, I had Glorious Burst. That's pretty much all there is to say about it. A Glorious Burst put in a ton of work in that matchup specifically because it kept our opponent from being able to ever get to Millennium on, which was really nice. And then by constantly tra destroying his Impmons and forcing him to mill himself out, uh, we actually ran into a couple situations where he almost decked himself out, but we were able to just kind of get there with Shangraymon as well, just because he's such a big, beefy powerhouse. And then in our top four match, again, we played Rookie Rush. It was a swift 2-0, not in our favor. Uh, game one, I just did not draw any tamers or any blockers. Uh, I think I drew one single Kari the entire game, and then in the, and I was just kind of surviving off playing my own rookies and, you know, digivolving up into as far as I could. Uh, I wasn't seeing any Megas either, and even if I did, I was only able to really get much use out of Slash because Shine was only killing one thing, and he kept playing the 5,000 rookies, like, uh, I believe it's Penguinmon and Rogermon as well, so even Shine could knock them out, but Slash could, but one Slash wasn't going to do me very good against Ricky Rush when he was summoning, you know, four or five Digimon over the course of three or four turns because he was able to get his tamer out quickly, Davis, to kind of go to three every turn and constantly just put the pressure on me. And pretty much the exact same thing happened in game two. We just couldn't draw an out, we couldn't draw a blocker, couldn't draw any tamers, kind of get our Shines to get actual full value, and as a result, we ended up just losing the whole thing. And that's the one kind of misstep I think I took in terms of building this deck was that I didn't have a lot of strong security hits. The strongest security hits I had in the game were the tamers themselves. Themselves, but against a deck that was just full-on aggro and didn't really care about what I'm putting up front-wise, they just kind of care about what they're seeing in the security itself, this is where something like where Eden's Javelin would have actually come up and actually would have been beneficial. But I didn't want to pigeonhole myself to have a card just for a specific matchup. I wanted to make sure I had cards that were kind of good for overall matchups. And that's why something like Geograde and Glorious Burst are still strong pickups, because they're very good for specific matchups that they've been metagamed for, but for any other matchup they can still come in clutch and kind of do their part. Uh, Eden's Javelin I found costing 6 and having no way to actually reduce it like you could with Glorious Burst. It was one of those cards where generally once you played it, it kind of ended your turn and I wanted to have more opportunities to play more cards that I could have other plays throughout the course of the, the game or throughout the course of the turn and then end on a you know removal spell quote unquote without necessarily having to give my opponent enough or too much memory. But yeah, that that's pretty much it for the video today, guys. If you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like what you see here and you like what we do here at the Overground and you like what I had today, oh hello kitty. This is Tigger. He wants to be famous. But back to the blurb. Please consider subscribing and please consider giving this video a thumbs up as well to let us know that you love what we do here for you. So I have been Mike, aka Sanaku, and we'll see you guys in the next one.